Hi, this is John with John's Workshop. This is a first in a series of videos on this Robin Air refrigerant recovery machine that I'm doing. I just got the machine a little while ago and I'm working on refurbishing it. So what it does, it's an automotive recovery machine and it's set up with uh, R134A refrigerant. And the fellow I bought it from said that it no longer recovers refrigerant. So that's what we're gonna be debugging. Uh, as you'll see, the first step is really going to be getting it cleaned up, and that's going to be the first video here. And then I'm going to do some successive videos where we get it all back together and up and running again. Here's a shot of the machine just after I purchased it. It was a challenge to get it into the truck, but by flipping it over sideways, I was able to get it in there finally. Here's the unit. Just got it out of the truck. Kind of looking it over, I got a panel off here. Pretty grimy, see a lot of dirt here, fingerprints, and uh, a lot of oil that's kind of been flowed all over this thing for the last 15 or so years. Kind of grody. Um, overall, it looks pretty good. I think my first step here though is gonna be to clean this thing up and just get some of the grime off of it so I can figure out uh, what the plumbing situation is. And then uh, I know I'm gonna need a new one of these uh, filter dryers. So I'm gonna have to get that. And the here's the vacuum pump situation. There's the drain. Here's the uh, oil level. That looks pretty terrible. So I'm gonna probably need to pull this vacuum pump out and do a little cleanup work. Uh, but. Overall, it looks pretty good. I think the real question is gonna be well there, whether the vacuum pump is gonna work uh, sufficiently well. And then also the compressor, which is over here, and whether that compressor uh, is gonna work or not. You can hear it like make a humming noise, but whether it's really actually gonna do anything uh, remains to be seen. So that's what I'm gonna start doing is uh, doing some cleanup work on this thing. And then also trying to figure out what the plumbing is and what is plumb to what in here. Continuing to take this thing apart, got the, got the cover off here. This was a little tricky to get this. This piece here is kind of part of the structure, but I wanted to get it out of there and just try to get things cleaned out down below here. And so I'm just using some wooden blocks here to try to support this thing. It's not very stable with, uh, without that main uh, mounting part, but it allows me to get in here and get a lot of that dirt out of there uh, just so I can see what's going on here. So I've got the tank propped up here, the recovery tank. I wanted to get the scale out. Boy, there was a lot of oil down in here. So I wanted to get that kind of cleaned up and then I wanted to take a look at the scale. So this is the scale here. You can see how that's made. There's pretty much just this aluminum block that's mounted on this side, kind of on the right side of your screen there, to the bottom plate. And then on the top plate, you can see it's mounted over here on the left side of the screen. So as the weight increases, that uh, thinned out part of the aluminum in there starts to deflect and there's a strain gauge in there. Uh, and the wire for the strain gauge is right here. So you can see that's pretty much how the scale works and then it's calibrated and the computer then up up above actually handles taking that signal and converting it into a weight uh, but i wanted to get in here and make sure things were clean here i'm going to blow this out one more time with the compressor but boy it had so much oil just kind of and grime shoved down in here i'm going to blow this out with the compressor but from what i can tell this scale actually looks like it's in pretty good shape well, I've got this part right here cleaned up pretty well. Got a lot of the oil out of the bottom there that was down in the, not only underneath where the scale is, but also just in general, kind of cleaned all that junk out. So I'm gonna start putting things back together here, at least just get this in since it's kind of a main structural piece of this thing. And then I know I'm gonna to have to pull uh, the vacuum pump out, probably take this cover off, have a look at the oil situation in there, which is probably not too good. That vacuum pump oil looked pretty bad, so I felt like I need to probably pull the vacuum pump out and I'm going to take this cover off and we'll just see how bad it is in there. I don't know how often the oil was getting changed. 
All right, here we go. I'm going to drain the oil out of here. We'll see what this stuff looks like. Oh, wow. That does not look good. Yeah, that looks pretty kind of brown and green. So there's a lot of sludge in here. Uh, so it's probably good. I'm going to take the cover off here and just see what's left in here. Even at the sight glass up here, it really didn't look so good. I think there maybe was a lot of water in there as well, and then probably dirty refrigerant too. There sure is a lot of dye in that vacuum pump oil. It really starts out clear, um, so it must have sucked off a lot of oil in the refrigerant system that had dye in it. That almost looks like refrigerant oil with dye in it. And I'm wondering if they actually used that as the vacuum pump oil maybe instead of true vacuum pump oil. Now that the oil's drained out, we're going to take the cover off and see what kind of sludge is left in here. Kind of makes you wonder about that oil. If this uh, was being used on your car, I wonder how good of a vacuum it would really be able to draw with the wrong kind of oil in there, possibly. I don't know how careful folks are when it comes to changing the vacuum pump oil. There's a automatic notification on the machine that tells you to do that, but you can also just reset it too and not change it. The machine doesn't really know There's an o ring in here, and then I don't need to buy a new gasket when this comes off. It's a paper towel under here. Oops. There we go. All right, here's the last bolt coming out. Oh. I think it's going to come right off. Uh, looks like there's a, a nice o ring in there. Oh boy, that looks pretty sludgy. Look at the inside of this. Holy cow. Wow. Look at this. There's a bunch of sludge all over it. Wow. Hmm. Looks a little bit rusty in here too. I don't know if it's been sucking water, but there's a lot of grit in here. Oh, this is like some kind of, it feels like sand or something. So. Okay, here's what you see in there. This is definitely uh, in need of some clean out work. I'm gonna dump that oil, then we'll take a look at what's left in there. Okay, we'll get the oil out of here first. Oh, there's a a little bit of sludge going out there, too. Okay, well... Oh yeah, look at this. It's deep. Deep with sludge there. Uh, so, yeah, this is all going to get cleaned out. And, uh, put some new vacuum pump oil in there and we'll see what it does. But This is definitely not good the way it is. I did a complete rebuild of the vacuum pump, which is the subject of another video. But at the end of it, I was able to get it down to the spec, which is 20 microns. I'm gonna let it run for a while here and just see how it does, uh, make sure it's working before we get it installed back in the, uh, in the Robin Air unit. And we're at 19 microns, and it's been running for maybe an hour and 15 minutes or so. I think that's about as low as it's going to get. Next, we investigate the compressor and try to figure out why it was unable to recover refrigerant. Okay, it's trying to recover. I disconnected the fan wire, you can see here, because I was making too much noise. You can hear, compressor's running. This line's a tiny bit warm. This line's just cool and 
This one's even a little bit colder. But not much is really happening. And if we look at the temperature, I'm sorry, if we look at the pressure, I had charged the low pressure line. It was up to 60. And then when I started the compressor, see it's trying to recover. When I started that, it was quickly down to 10. And it's just sitting there. It's not able to draw a vacuum here at all. It did say change filter here and I just kind of went ahead and ran it anyways. But the uh, compressor doesn't seem to be able to pull this down. So I think that's our recovering problem. Not sure if it's due to the filter. Got one in the mail coming. Uh, so certainly we'll change that out and see what happens here. But I'm not hopeful. Concerned that the compressor is not working properly. Now that I stopped, it's telling me to drain oil. So I'm going to try to do that and see what happens. There's definitely oil draining out. So I don't know if somebody just didn't do all the oil draining that they were supposed to previously. And at this point, all the oil is drained. That's about the level we have there. So maybe uh, two ounces, something like that, that was just left in there. Uh, don't know if that would uh, affect the ability of the compressor to pull a vacuum or not, but uh, that was what was in there. That completes the first part of this series, just taking an initial look at the recovery machine and the general overall condition of things. And in the next episode, we'll talk in more detail about how it operates and how the different components are plumbed together so we can debug and figure out what is really wrong with this machine. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.